everyone, and welcome to Motion Tutorials, where we go over weekly topics in motion graphics, VFX, and 3D animation. I am your host, Sean Frangella, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about building out a full 3D logo in Element 3D version 2.2 for After Effects, starting with artwork that you have in Illustrator. I recently published a video of the new updates for version 2.2 of Element 3D, and I started talking about some examples using a 3D logo, and I didn't fully build it out yet, but what you're seeing is the end of this video through the mastery of video editing where I have it done. And I thought it'd be worthwhile to build out a full tutorial of this process because it's some really useful stuff and I'll integrate a lot of stuff for version two and version 2.2. So we can talk about this logo extrusion process and keep things up to date because it's changed a lot since the first version and you can do a lot more. So we'll create this 3D logo that you're seeing now, talk about a lot of updated features of version two like shadows and reflections and do all sorts of fun stuff and see if we can knock it out in 10 or 15 minutes. So let's get into After Effects. We got our project. I'm just gonna make a new composition and I'll make this 1920 by 1080 and I'll call this 3D Logo 01. And there we got our composition and I'll make a new solid and this is how we get element in and I'll call this E3D. Going out into effects, type in element and drag this on. Now the big thing we're for creating 3D logos is we're gonna use this custom text and masks. And that's where we're gonna bring in our illustrator parts. So I got this illustrator file. And the point of this is that there's three shapes. There's this ring, this ring, and then this. So it's important that these are all fills, not strokes, because that's what we're gonna paste. And that the artboard is about what we want it at. So I already set this up at 1920 by 1080. So what I'm gonna do first in illustrator is make three solids by doing command Y, and I'll call this a circle, and we'll just duplicate that twice and then rename these outer circle and rename this one letters. And on each of these, I'm gonna go back and forth between Illustrator, copy each part, so edit, copy, and then paste onto the appropriate one. And what that's gonna do is create a mask on each layer of that specific shape. So then all I need to do is go into element on the effect settings and grab each of those layers. So for path one, I'll do outer circle, path two, circle, path three, letters. And then we can hide those and jump into scene setup for element 3D. Now to get those, we just need to click this extrude button and it's gonna by default grab that first path. And you can see it puts it in this group folder. We can just rename this outer ring. And there's our first little extrusion and bevel. And we can change the bevel scale and bring it up as well as go into this presets, bevels, and either V1 bevels or physical, and just right off the bat, grab some quick objects. So I'll just grab one of these. This one looks good. I'll put that there. And that's gonna create that bevel that I can still adjust. And all I need to do is either extrude again and change it, or if I wanna retain some of this stuff, I can just do right click, duplicate model, and then under this new one, which I'll rename circle, change the custom path. So I'll change this to two. And then we could just scale that down with the letter R if we need to, and probably grab a different bevel. And there we have our inset. So it's looking pretty interesting. We can see that we're getting a little bit of anti-aliasing issues. So we might wanna grab this path resolution for things really like circles where that's gonna be an issue. Now we just need to extrude the initials. And I don't wanna bring in all those textures. So I'll just press extrude, call this letters. And same thing, change this to custom path three. There's my letters, I can scale them up and I can even move them within my element 3D scene. And this is new to version two and just slide them out so they're not poking out the back. And I can always go back and forth and kind of adjust these because I just kind of picked random bevels and I just wanted to create something interesting. So there we got our logo. If it flips around, I don't want it to show just the reverse. So what I'm gonna do is copy this within my group. I could do that by holding option and dragging and that'll create a copy within this group. And I'll press E to rotate and I can hold shift to constrain and then W and I'll just drop that back in. So that way, even if this is spinning around or something, we always get it looking the right way. And I just might wanna scale both of these other extrusions up so they're filling out these letters a bit, which is a convenient thing about Working this way in groups in version two is it's really easy to kind of customize everything. All right, so that's kind of our basic logo extrusion. That's how we do it. If we go to okay, there's our logo. We can make a new camera 
by doing layer new camera. And then I can spin around. So if that's all you needed, you got what you need to know. But if you want to keep going and learn it, let's talk about making this look cool, get some lighting, ambient occlusion, and some reflections on a floor, which are a lot of new and different features for version two and with some tweaks for version 2.2. So what I'm going to do is go back into scene setup and let's make a reflective floor for this as well as talk about the group reflections. So I'm just going to go here to create and I'll grab a plane, move that down and scale it up. So it's really big. And this will just be our little reflective floor. So let's go into our presets. I'll go to physical materials and I'll grab this metal diffuse that looks good. It's reflective, but we don't see anything reflecting by default because what we need to do is it change the reflection mode on this, which right now it's at default. And what I want to do is change that to mirror surface. And I might just need a better material. I think it's working right, but this diffuse probably isn't that great. So let's turn the Chrome on and there we go. So we have a reflection after we put mirror surface. We could disable environment, which is the reflection of all this stuff that we're seeing in the floor. And if we go to this plain material, change that more in this tab, if we just wanted to turn the reflectivity down of how much it's catching of the environment and this we can make it transparent with refraction and a lot of other stuff. So that's good. Now what I want to do is render some reflections of these objects within themselves. And what I can do in version two now is just go to group folder and go to reflect mode and I'll change this one to spherical and render self. And you can see that that very quickly changes the whole group to where we're picking up on the idea of some reflection. So that's good. We're talking about reflections. We probably want a texture on these letters. So let's go to our pro presets and maybe I'll just grab this white and just adjust a little. So let's not bevel outline. That's a pretty cool new feature. Let's use that. We'll have this be a kind of our, our, our look of this. Cause it's a new feature that I like with this bevel outline. And then what we could do is just change this expand edges or bevel size. If we want to make this bigger, we can, we can tweak it that way. And you can see as we're doing that, you're just, we're picking up some of those options in these reflections. And let's just leave this back. one as that it's good to have two options. Now on this texture, let's just tweak it a bit. Let's go down and just give it a little reflectivity, maybe a little illumination. That's pretty cool. And you can see that picking up in our reflections and that's good for now. So one thing I wanted to talk about, like I did in my top features is this symmetry thing, which is new. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new sphere. I'll just put this over on the left, put this gold texture on it, grab this button and offset its anchor point. And I want to put this within a folder too. So I'm going to go to, so I'm going to right click and do a new group folder, put that in here, drop this in. And every time there's a folder, you can add symmetry. So if I grab this sphere and grab within this group, if I turn on symmetry on X, you can see it creates a symmetrical version of that. And then if I move this at all, it's going to follow along. So it's a cool way to be able to create symmetrical objects that you can just kind of mirror this way. So that's good. Let's go to okay. Now, and let's start to talk about lighting and rendering. So here we are, we have our scene it's reflected, but it's still kind of flat looks kind of PlayStation one like, and the reason for that is because we haven't added any lights, ambient occlusion shadows or any of that. And all of that now is under render settings and we could just go down this list. So Let's zoom in here so we'll get a good idea of what we're going to see. We'll go to lighting. We can add additional lighting if we want, which is going to give kind of a different built in cast on all of this. You can see as I scrub through those, there's different you know, basic lighting setups, which can be pretty useful to get started and get a different look. That one looks pretty interesting. And now we want to start getting some shadows. If we could do that under shadow and ambient occlusion. So first let's turn on ambient occlusion right here. And by default, it's going to be SSAO. And if we have the render time and we want to change that to ray traced, we're going to get a lot more realistic ambient occlusion casting on this from objects blocking the light from themselves. And now if we want to get real shadows in addition to ambient occlusion on this in version two, we can open up our shadows tab here, enable that. And by default, it's using shadow mapping to kind of wrap this around 
quickly, but if we change this to ray traced, then if we start adding lights by doing layer new light, I'll just grab a parallel light here, maybe give it a little bit of color to go with our theme and turn up our shadow darkness. I'll just put this at like 2000, make sure cast shadows is on. And now if we move this around and let's look from the front and move this up and just point it down a bit. Now, if we go back to our effect and turn on and off those shadows, you can really see from the multiple views that we're getting those shadows. So now we have this logo, it's looking pretty good. If this was a real project, the last thing we'd wanna do is clean up some of these edges. If this was just a still. So we'd wanna to go to output. And if we're getting edges like this that are a little choppy, we can turn on super sampling to something like two or four, which is gonna add render time, but look a lot smoother and even enhance multi-sampling if we really need to get in there. If you're getting edge issues with lines like this, you can adjust here between the multi-sampling, super sampling, and enhanced sampling as much as you need to get it to look crisp and making sure to not blow up your render time. So there we have a quick 3D extruded logo using Element 3D version two and talk about some of the new features. I think there's a pretty good quick job of getting this working. And if you're using Element version two, be sure to check out my other new tutorials on version two and my top features of version 2.2. And you can let me know what you thought of this tutorial or any of mine by hitting me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube to get new tutorials on Element 3D, After Effects, and Cinema 4D. Thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.